I wanted to share a little of my background. Started when I was five years old. I had a raggedy little mutt named Goliath who would attack anything, including bus tires. And one day my mother got a phone call telling me uh, that Goliath had been run, run over by a bus. And she had to tell me. So she turned to me with tears in her eyes and informed me that my dog was dead. And I, I looked back and my first thought was, so what, it's a dog. And I couldn't figure out why my mom was upset over a dog. As the years went by, people started dying, family and friends, and I always had the same reaction. So what, they're just people, people die every day, why do you care about these ones? Um, years later, many years later, uh, a psychiatrist would give me a piece of paper saying that I'm a sociopath, but I, don't, I, I didn't know any of this back then. I had violent urges as long as I can remember. Usually if someone would annoy me or upset me, I would have just a, an extreme desire to take them out of the woods or something and torture them. But I resisted this urge because I was told you have to resist these kind of, you know, it's like a, you know, a, a smoker who gets on an airplane. You have the urge to smoke, but you're not allowed to smoke, and so just, just keep it to yourself. And so I would keep things to myself. Uh, occasionally I would get called to the school counselor's office. David, why did you draw a picture of you killing all your classmates? Well, it's only a picture. It's not like I'm doing anything, right? As I uh, entered my late teens, I had already figured out that I don't have to listen to what people tell me. I don't have to listen to what society tells me. I can do whatever I want, and that I'd been duped. So I started just doing whatever I felt like doing, sitting beside uh, one of my friends on the couch watching TV one day, and he grabbed the remote control out of my hand, and I just turned and punched him in his face. And uh, I didn't feel bad about it. I felt like I was finally being myself and not, and not holding back. A while after that, I got into an argument with, uh, with my best friend at the time, and uh, I hit him with a shovel and started choking him. And I just remember smiling in his face as his eyes rolled back in his head and bloody foam came out of his mouth. It was Thanksgiving Day of 1994. I hit my dad in the head with a hammer seven or eight times. So I ended up in a couple of jails, a couple of mental hospitals, and a few prisons. It was 1995, and I was in a mental hospital, and it was the day of the O.J. Simpson verdict. And all the crazy people were arguing about O.J. Simpson, and uh, some were saying he, he didn't do it, and so he should go free. Others were saying he did do it, so he should go to prison. And I offered a third option. I, I just blurted out, hey, I, I hope he did do it, and I hope he gets away with it. And this guard heard me, and he starts yelling at me, going, that's sick, that's sick. And I couldn't figure out why this guy cared at all about some woman being murdered. A few weeks after that, a few weeks after that, I was uh, talking to one of the administrators there at the hospital, and he was asking me about my views, and uh, he eventually just stopped me and said, very calmly, if you don't see why that's wrong, then they have got you in the right place. 